Well, hello boys and girls, sports fans, it's Den here. I'm in London now. Last week I was somewhere else, and I'm with Mr. Charles Phillips, CEO, Import. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, it's been a while. Uh, certainly has been a little while. Now, you've got a lot of good things to say, so let's, let's kick off. Loosely coupled. Yes, yeah, so uh, we think the next generation of applications will be different in the sense that they will have to be integrated a lot more easily than we think of it today. So these monolithic suites that are hard to integrate with anything else. Which ones might we be thinking uh, of then? You can guess a few. So <laughs> we'll call that the monolithic era. Right. Uh, it's coming to an end because every company is making acquisitions. And by definition, they're dismembering those suites. So you create an integration issue. Yep. So we have to assume you'll have to have an easy way to integrate dissimilar applications quickly. And the only way to do that is how the internet does it. Does it by letting the applications publish XML, simple, well-known format, instead of having a big piece of middleware that tries to understand every application on demand, which is kind of traditional way of doing it. Mm. So you push the complexity out to the application, they publish XML, it's a much more elegant architecture, and that's what our Python product does. So that's one trend that uh, we're seeing uh, uptake on, and it's our fastest growing product as Ion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people use it to integrate non n applications for that reason, because for the use case of business applications, um, it's very effective. It's quick, it comes on three CDs, and you're not taking three years trying to put in middleware. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've also talked um, recently about vertical markets, which other companies don't tend to talk about. So where's the, where's the, where's the strategy there at the moment? That's a very important part of our strategy. At our size, we have to segment and focus. And uh, for us, that means vertical expertise, vertical functionality. Our customers are still within for because we have that and the other guys don't. So we don't have a generic ERP product that serves all industries. Mm -hmm. We have purpose-built applications. We go deep into what we call micro-verticals. So not just food and beverage, for example. We do meats, bakers, butchers, that level of detail. Mm -hmm. And out of the box, and what that does is it speeds up the time and value because you're not customizing the application to add those industry features. So in the 12 or so industries we go deep in, we're much faster to install because we have those features. Okay. Other vendors would say, you know, we do verticals, we do micro verticals, yada, yada, yada. But w when I look at those, I tend to find that, you know, if they're lucky, they might, I don't know, cover 40, 50 percent in extreme cases maybe 60%, what, what level of coverage would you say that you've got with the micro-verticals now? We're a lot higher, it depends on the micro-vertical, but we shoot obviously for 100, but we're usually in the 80 to 90% range. Which is good the box. And uh, if you have a single product that has you know, 30 industries you're trying to support, you can only put a little in the user to release, so it's very thin, and then you hold up innovation for every other industry. Mm. I have something new for aerospace, he's trying to wait till there's something done for hospitals before I can ship, and that's why you had three year releases. Mm. We have ERP engines that cover one or two verticals that are similar, that's it. How often are you releasing that for those verticals? Um, a lot, that's everything. thing with our loosely coupled architecture. We can rub the engine without breaking the integration, without breaking the reports, mobile, mm. localizations, all that stuff is externalized to the applications. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to rev it. And we don't do big waterfall development anymore. We do these sprints. So it's usually every six to eight weeks we're dropping functionality. Six to eight weeks. That's what we're going for. Wow. That's pretty unusual. I, okay. Uh, well, that's not where we want to be. We want to get to SaaS on premise where we're managing your application remotely. We can see what you're running through our Ion support adapter. We can watch what you're running. And we send you the updates or send you patches on your behalf. Mm -hmm. and to tell you which configurations you should be running. So we have about 500 customers who are doing that with us today where we get a copy of the configurations every day and that way we can give them advice. You're already doing that. We're already doing that. We built that about a year ago when we first got here. Mm -hmm. So 500 customers who allowed us to install it so they pump us their configurations and if we know what you're running, mm -hmm. we can give you a lot better advice when to upgrade, um, when you're going to need a patch, and when you don't need a patch because sometimes things come out you don't know if it applies to you sure. or not. So uh, that's working. We just we'll have to get broader adoption, but it works. Well, that's good news. Let's talk about product just for a minute. You're going to be talking a little bit about um, the social elements that, that you're bringing to, to the table, and you're doing it a little bit differently to, to others. What's, what's that about? Yeah, we're rolling out a new social platform, um, and the difference is we don't have a, just a standalone platform that's external to our mm -hmm. applications that people just use to chat and communicate and play see, but we don't do that. Uh, social to us has to be embedded inside of the application. Right. And so when you're using an application, at any point in time, you can right-click and publish information to followers. 
And there are reasons you want to do that when you have a problem and you want to share it with people who can help solve the problem. And the system dynamically has a business graph that knows who's related to whom, depending on what your job is, and depending on what the piece of equipment, where it's located, who's responsible for maintaining things, who has authority to do what. And you can publish that information to people who can fix the problem. You don't have to know who they are. You have to know what the problem is. I have a problem. Somebody in production needs to know about this at production. It sends it in full context with the customer number, with the order number, with the invoice, with all that data. Mm. And so it's part of the application. And on the other end, it gets done as news feed. They can invoke the application and do more work on it. So it has to be embedded in the application, which means you have to change the way the application works and do that, which we've done, uh, because of our loosely coupled architecture, we're able to do that. Let me just get this clear in my mind, because this sounds incredibly simple from the outside. I imagine it must be incredibly complex from the inside. So are you telling me that Infor already understands the relationship between man and machine or man and exactly. product or man and order or what have we? It already has that knowledge that it can, that it can take for the purposes of this, this exercise, yeah? So we start with job roles out of our HR system. Right know what your job is, and we know, if, let's say you're a salesperson, okay, you have this territory, these 40 customers, probably okay. every order associated with any of those customers you're going to want to know about, and now we make you subscribe to those orders and to those customers. And the same thing in the reverse, uh, based on the product that was ordered, we know what manufacturing plant creates it, we know who the maintenance manager is, and so they should be subscribing to anything that happens in that plant or to that piece of equipment. So you start to build this social graph. Right. inside the enterprise and man and machines business objects we call artifacts right are all part of the session social network not just people and it doesn't matter how i'm configuring the info system to suit my needs i'm going to be able to simply do that come what may yeah well we get you started based on your profile and from there you can right click and subscribe to more things if you want right and uh, you can right click and see who else is following this piece of equipment hmm. Uh, you can right click and publish it to some, to your followers. Mm. And so we, it has to be dynamic. These, these are dynamic work groups that continue to grow as your job roles changes, this thing will change. But it also takes work, this unstructured process, uh, kind of the tribal knowledge as I call it, and mm. now you've moved that online because instead of calling 10 people trying to find out how to get it done, mm. and see how to get it done, they're all accessible. How's it being accepted among customers at the moment? Uh, People are fascinated with it, and then the next question we get is, how soon can I get it? So How soon can I get it, really? Yeah, yeah we've, huh. uh, very few times we come up with a product where that's where people's reaction is. They either ask for pricing or they ask for something <laughs> they get, which is a good sign of asking for pricing. So we know we're onto something, right. and we figured out how to inject it into our applications. Okay, last question, mobile. It's on everybody's minds. Every, you know, everybody would like to believe that the world of the PC is over, and quite frankly, I think that's a bit silly, but there we go. But nevertheless, there's a lot of interest in mobile. What's the story there? So we have a, a platform called Motion, in for Motion, and it uh, runs in the cloud. So we connect, Motion connects to all of our systems, whether on-premise or in the cloud, and it serves up data through purpose-built applications um, for specific processes. So it's not a generic platform where it's just a web browser with the same application. Mm. These are device-specific native applications to the device, uh, an iPad, for example. And then we, again, we think through the use cases on what is this person's job role. We build the apps by use case, not just a generic browser. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And we're going to see some examples of that in, in, in the coming days, aren't we? Uh, you'll see some examples in the morning. And will I be excited? Uh, you will be extremely excited. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, great to see you. Thanks very much okay, indeed for your time. Thank you. Again. Okay, thanks.